France is set to sign a US-led multilateral agreement aiming to govern how countries behave in space and on moon, according to two people familiar with the plans. France signing of the pact called Artemis Accords will mark one of the most significant endorsements yet of Washington's effort to shape international legal norms and standards for exploring the lunar surface, said the sources, who asked not to be identified. A spokeswoman for the French space agency did not immediately respond to a request for comment. A spokeswoman from NASA, which led the drafting of Artemis Accords, did not return an email seeking comment. French officials Tuesday night will sign the accords during a celebration at the French ambassador's residence in Washington, D.C. of the French space agency's 60th anniversary, one of the sources said. The country will become 20th to sign on the pact since 2020, which was conceived by the Trump administration as a diplomatic prong of NASA's flagship space exploration program, Artemis. That program aims to return humans to the moon's surface by 2025 with the help of U.S. allies and private companies. The accords mainly build on broader principles in the landmark 1967 Outer Space Treaty include an array of principles designed to promote peaceful uses of space from establishing safety zones around future moon bases to sharing scientific data with other countries. The United Kingdom, Japan and Canada are other key countries that have previously signed the accords with France set to become the seventh European state. The most recent signatory last month was Colombia, one of a handful of signatories that view the accords as a boost for developing their own space capabilities. Japan on Friday eased its borders for foreign tourists and began accepting visa applications, but only for those on guided package tours who are willing to follow mask wearing and other antivirus measures as the country cautiously tries to balance business and infection worries. Friday is the first day to start procedures needed for the entry and the arrival are not expected until late June at the earliest, even though airport immigration and quarantine office stood by for any possible arrivals. The Japan Tourism Agency says tours are being accepted from 98 countries and regions including the United States, Britain, China, South Korea, Thailand and Singapore which are deemed as having low infection risk. Japan's partial resumption of international tourism that was halted during the coronavirus pandemic is being carried out under guidelines based on an experiment conducted in late May. It involved about 50 participants, mostly tour agency employees from Australia, Singapore, Thailand and the United States. In one case, a tour for a four-member group was cancelled when one of the participants tested positive for COVID-19 after arriving in Japan. We accept the resumption of inbound tourism will help stimulate the local economy. Minister of Land, Infrastructure, Transport and Tourism told reporters on Friday. Under the guidelines, participants are requested to wear face masks most of the time and to purchase insurance to cover medical costs in case they contract COVID-19. The rules don't set a cap for the number of people in one group, but tour guides must be present throughout the tour. Popular singer Justin Bieber took to Instagram to reveal to his followers that he has a rare syndrome called Ramsey Hunt syndrome, which causes facial paralysis. Due to this, the right side of the Grammy winner's face is paralyzed. Justin Bieber put out a video on Friday, June 10, explaining the disorder and captioned it, Important, please watch. I love you guys and keep me in your prayers. According to Mayo Clinic, Ramsey Hunt syndrome attacks facial nerves and it is caused by the same virus that causes 
chicken pox. In the video, he shows his followers how he can barely move the right half of his face due to the partial paralysis. He said, as you can see from my face, I have this syndrome called Ramsey Hunt syndrome and it is from this virus that attacks the facial nerves in my ear and causes paralysis. In the video, he further shows how one of his eyes is in blinking. I can't smile on this side of my face. This nostril will not move. So, there is full paralysis on this side of my face, says Justin in the video. He further says, this is pretty serious. As you can see, I wish this was in the case, but obviously my body is telling me I have got to slow down. I hope you guys understand. I will be using this time to just rest and relax and get back to a 100% so that I can do what I was born to do. The Canadian singer also says he is unsure of how long it will take to heal. He also revealed that he was doing facial exercises to get his face back to normal. China on Friday attacked the theory that the coronavirus pandemic may have originated as a leak from a Chinese laboratory as a politically motivated lie after World Health Organization recommended in its strongest terms yet that a deeper probe is needed into whether a lab accident may be to be blamed. Foreign Minister Spokesperson Zhao Lijian also rejected accusations that China had not fully cooperated with investigators, saying it welcomed a science-based probe but rejected any political manipulation. He also reiterated calls for an investigation into highly suspicious laboratories such as Fort Detrick and the University of North Carolina in the United States where China has suggested without evidence that the U.S. was developing the coronavirus as a bioweapon. The lab leak theory is totally a lie concocted by anti-China forces for political purposes which has nothing to do with science, Zhao said at a daily briefing. We always supported and participated in science-based global virus tracing, but we firmly opposed any forms of political manipulation, he said. Zhao said China has made major contributions towards virus tracing, sharing the most data and research results that fully reflects China's open, transparent and responsible attitude, as well as its support for the work of WHO and the advisory group, he said. The WHO stands in a report released Thursday is a sharp reversal of the UN Health Agency's initial assessment of the pandemic's origin. It comes after many critics accused WHO of being too quick to dismiss or underplay a lab leak theory that put Chinese officials on the defensive. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has won the no-confidence vote by 211 to 148 votes. A total of 359 votes were cast, of which 211 MPs expressed confidence in Prime Minister Johnson, who has been rocked by rising inflation and the party gate scandal. Boris Johnson faced the most daunting test of his Prime Ministership as he faced a no-confidence vote on June 6, Monday. Over 40 Conservative Party MPs, Boris Johnson's own party men, had demanded that Prime Minister Johnson resign after he and his staff members held parties at 10 Downing Street during COVID lockdowns. The scandal known as Partygate mounted pressure on Prime Minister Johnson even during his India visit. As the criticism over the Partygate scandal continued, as many as 54 MPs from the Conservative Party sought his resignation. With this, the 15% requirement for a trust vote was met and a ballot was held to decide PM Johnson's future. To survive the no-confidence vote, Johnson needed the support of 180 Conservative MPs. British Parliament has a total of 359 MPs in the House of Commons or the lower house. 
ahead of the crucial vote mp johnson addressed the dozens of conservative lawmakers in a house of commons room on monday as he tried to shore up support i will lead you to victory again he was quoted as saying by the associate press however the party gate scandal has brought to the fore the deep conservative divisions less than 3 years after boris johnson led the party to its biggest election victory in decades the four nations court grouping of us india japan and australia is playing an important role in promoting a free and open indo pacific japanese prime minister fumio kishida said here on friday urging the like minded countries to increase their investment in the strategically vital region amid china's growing assertiveness kishida arrived in singapore on friday to deliver the keynote speech at asia's premier defense conclave the shangri la dialogue he said the leaders of the scott security dialogue in their recent meeting in tokyo in may pledged to spend more than 50 billion us dollars on infrastructure assistance and investment in the indo-specific over the next 5 years which will be essential for promoting prosperity in the region in addition to the asean and specific countries japan australia india and the united states also known as quad are playing an important role in promoting a free and open indo-specific kishida said it is also important for like minded countries to work together to increase the investment in resources in this region he said as he called for economic and security cooperation the squad leaders launched a major new initiative for the indo pacific in may that allows the partner countries to fully monitor the waters on their shores and help ensure peace and stability in the region a move that comes amid china's increasingly intimidatory behavior the announcement on the roll out of indo specific maritime domain awareness came at the end of the second in person scott summit attended by prime minister narendra modi us president joe biden japanese prime minister kishida and his australian counterpart anthony albanese <music> Rafael Nadal on Sunday June 5 won the French Open 2022 after beating Norway's Casper Ruud without having to break much sweat. Despite his chronic foot injury, the 36-year-old came out thrums at Court Philippe Chartier and won the clay court tournament at Roland Garros for the 14th time. En route to his victory, Nadal also knocked world number 1 Novak Djokovic also the 2021 men's singles champion out of the competition. On Monday, June 6, Nadal struck a pose with his French Open trophy with the iconic Eiffel Tower in the backdrop. Nadal wore a white t-shirt and jeans looking stylish in front of the journalists who were busy clicking his pictures. The official Instagram handle of Roland Garros uploaded the video after winning the title nadal said that he wouldn't have taken the risk of playing in any other grand slam amidst his issues with his foot we have been through a lot of emotions probably the most unexpected surprisingly and all the things i had to do to play the event make the title one of the most specials nadal was quoted as saying Nadal also admitted that he came into the tournament with very little preparation. Previously, he had said that he didn't consider himself among the favorites to win the title. Of course, when you arrive with a poor preparation like I did, every day is a challenge. You need to increase your level of tennis every single day, he added. Earlier this year, Nadal was also ruled out for 4 to 6 weeks. after he suffered a rib stress fracture during the Indian Wells Masters US Secretary of State Antony Blinken gave support Monday to reports that Russia has stolen grain from Ukraine for resale 
even as Moscow blocks the country from exploiting its own corn. There are credible reports that Russia is pilfering Ukraine's green exports to sell for its own profit, Blinken said at a State Department conference on food security issues arising from the invasion of Ukraine. Now Russia is hoarding its food exports as well, Blinken added, outlining the reasons for the sharp surge in global prices for wheat and other grains and looming shortages. The war is having a devastating impact on global food security because Ukraine is one of the breadbaskets of the world, Blinken said. The New York Times reported Monday that a number of freight vessels have departed Russia-controlled ports with what U.S. officials have described as stolen Ukrainian grain. It said that the United States has alerted 14 countries, mostly in Africa, about the shipments as many of them are dependent on grain imports and already face severe constrained supplies. Blinken said the Russian Navy has blocked grain carriers from leaving the Black Sea port of Odessa in an effort to blackmail the world into supporting Moscow's war. Right now, a Russian naval blockade in the Black Sea is preventing Ukraine's crops from being shipped to their normal destinations, he said. There is somewhere around 20 million tons of wheat that is trapped in silos near Odisha and in ships literally filled with grain that are stuck in the Odisha port because of this Russian blockade. Blinken said it was a deliberate strategy by Russian President Vladimir Putin to force the rest of the world to give in to him and eliminate sanctions on Russia. In another words, quite simply put, it is blackmail, Blinken said. Russia is deploying troop reinforcements in eastern Ukraine to help capture a key city, a Ukrainian official said Tuesday, as Moscow's artillery kept up a barrage aimed at grinding down Ukrainian defenses. Luhansk governor Serhii Heide told the Associate Press that Russian forces control the industrial outskirts of Severodonetsk, one of the two cities in Luhansk region still in Ukrainian hands. Tougher street battles continue with varying degrees of success, Heidek said. The situation constantly changes, but Ukrainians are repelling attacks. Russia appears bent on capturing the entire eastern Donbass part of Ukraine, which is made up of the Donetsk and Luhansk regions. Though while the Kremlin's forces have superior firepower, the Ukrainian defenders, among them the country's most well-trained forces, are entrenched and have the capability to counter-attack. Moscow's strategies has suffered numerous setbacks, however, since Russia invaded Ukraine on February 24, including a failed attempt to take Kyiv, the capital. Heide said Russian troops shelled a local market a school and a college building destroying the latter. Three wounded people were sent to hospitals in other parts of Ukraine, he said. A total destruction of the city is underway. Russian shelling has intensified significantly over the past 24 hours. Russians are using scorched earth tactics, Heide said. In all, Ukrainian forces had repelled 10 Russian attacks over the previous 24 hours. According to Heide, his report couldn't be independently verified. The Taliban have arrested a well-known Afghan fashion model and three of his colleagues, accusing them of disrespecting Islam and the Quran, the Muslim holy book, according to videos released by Afghanistan's new rulers. Ajmal Hakiki, known for his fashion shows, YouTube clips and modeling events, appeared handcuffed in videos posted on Twitter by the Taliban intelligence agency on Tuesday. In one widely circulated and contentious video, Hakiki is seen laughing as his colleague Gulam Saki, who is known to have a speech impediment that he uses for humor, recites verses of Quran in Arabic in a comical voice. After the arrest, 
the Taliban released a video of Hakiki and his colleagues seen standing in light brown jail uniforms and apologizing to the Taliban government and religious scholars. The video was accompanied by a tweet in Dairy language saying, No one is allowed to insult Quranic verses or sayings of Prophet Muhammad. Later Wednesday, Amnesty International released a statement urging the Taliban to immediately and unconditionally release Hakiki and his colleagues. Amnesty has documented several arbitrary detentions by Taliban in Afghanistan, often accompanied by coerced statements in an attempt to stifle dissent in the country and deter others from expressing their views.